In today's show, we're going to break down a study highlighting a mechanism by which seed oil consumption can contribute to both cardiovascular disease as well as chronic inflammation. There's two different studies that we're going to break down today. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this one particular mechanism known as a reduction in a key antioxidant enzyme that's associated with HDL cholesterol called paraoxinase 1, known as PON1. One of the studies that we're going to dive into right now is titled Lower Serum Paraoxinase 1 Activity is Related to Linoleic and Docosahexaenoic Fatty Acids in Type 2 Diabetic Patients. I know there were some jargonistic terms in the title of the study that was published in the archives of medical research. This was an analysis using a control group that didn't have type 2 diabetes comparing serum levels of linoleic acid and docosahexaenoic acid. And let's just pause and talk about what those fatty acids are and the differences here. DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, is a long chain PUFA that's anti-inflammatory. EPA and DHA are found in breast milk. They are found in fatty fish, um, other di uh, different types of foods. And these fatty acids actually provide a lot of anti-inflammatory precursors to fatty acid moieties in the body, but also the structure of the brain. So we recommend DHA for pregnant women, for lactating women, breastfeeding women, because the brain is developing rapidly and neuronal uh, synapses are forming. So DHA is very beneficial. Now it is a polyunsaturated fatty acid, but it's anti-inflammatory, it's health promoting. You can enumerate your levels of DHA and EPA through what's known as the omega-3 index. We've interviewed William Harris on this podcast and talked more about that. So in short, DHA is protective, while linoleic acid in higher concentrations is associated in this study with lower levels of the key HDL-associated antioxidant enzyme known as PON1. Okay, now why are we talking about HDL? We know that HDL is involved in reverse cholesterol transport. The so-called good cholesterol also has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory capabilities. And it turns out that when your dietary consumption of linoleic acid levels are high because you're eating canola, cottonseed, soybean, and corn oil, that there is this associated reduction in this key antioxidant enzyme that is tethered to HDL cholesterol that might render LDL cholesterol to be more prone to becoming oxidized, initiating the this cascade leading to atherosclerosis or plaque formation that can ultimately lead to major adverse cardiovascular events and cerebrovascular events like a stroke. I know there's a lot there I hope I didn't speak too quickly, uh, but let's dive into this study in more depth. Then we will look at another study. This one just looked at lower levels of PON1 and its association with coronary artery disease. But I'm going to pause and just thank you for being here. Hopefully you're enjoying this content. If you do, please hit that like button. I would love to know what you think in the comment section below. We're going to talk more about dietary seed oils and how they could be problematic and increase your risk possibly for cardiovascular disease. Now, since we're talking about metabolic health, I just want to remind you about the Berberine Fasting Accelerator by Myoscience. It's an awesome natural product that not only helps with curbing food cravings, but it helps whole body glucose metabolism and supporting metabolic health. There's over 300 reviews over at myoscience.com. One of uh, many customers find that if you take this in the evening, it might help curb food cravings and elongate your fast. So you can go to myoscience.com and save with the code podcast at checkout. Okay, so getting to the study, the investigators write, earlier studies confirmed that pro-inflammatory cytokines reducing circulating PON1 by inhibiting its liver or hepatic synthesis and secretion. Such occurrences would lead to a vicious cycle of further oxidation, more inflammation, and a further reduction in PON1. So let's pause here. Chronic inflammation decreases the activity of this key anti-inflammatory enzyme that is tethered with HDL that helps reduce LDL oxidation. So they go on to say higher serum levels of high sensitivity C-reactive protein confirmed by the presence of chronic inflammation in our patients, but it has not been proven as an independent predictor of low PON1 activity. It may be only a participant together with age, gender, hemoglobin A1C, insulin resistance, and pro-oxidative status in predicting lower PON1 in type 2 diabetic patients. It is possible that the interaction between chronic low-grade inflammation and oxidative stress could be due to a stronger association of other pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as interleukin 1 beta, TNF alpha, et cetera, that affect PON1 activity. Okay, that's all 
fine and dandy, but you might be saying, well, what is the association with this enzyme and dietary levels of corn, canola, cottonseed, soybean oil? You're like, Mike, that's what I want to know about. Should I be avoiding seed oils? And what mechanistic link is there with seed oil consumption and reductions in key antioxidant enzymes? Well, here is the stepwise multilinear regression model showing independent relationships with serum PON1 activity and serum polyunsaturated fatty acids. It turns out that there are inverse associations with as blood levels of dietary linoleic acid are higher, that is associated with a statistically significant reduction in PON1 activity. In contrast, higher blood levels of the anti-inflammatory PUFA known as DHA are linked positively with higher levels of PON1 activity. And what they did find is there was a negative association with PON1 activity and the incidence of diabetes, meaning that there's a higher prevalence of lower PON1 activity. Again, a healthful enzyme is lower in individuals or subjects who have type 2 diabetes. So I think that's important to acknowledge uh, the take home here. More chronic inflammation, more metabolic stress, lower levels of this key anti-inflammatory antioxidant enzyme, and possibly higher proportions of LDL oxidation. So I think that's quite interesting. And that's, again, this is a study looking at 20 type 2 diabetics compared to 16 healthy controls, finding that linoleic acid in the blood is inversely correlated with PON1 activity. So what's the take home here? You know, a lot of people do recommend polyunsaturated, you know, and when I say a lot of people, we're talking about institutions, the American Heart Association. We're talking about, you know, um, our government institutions, you know, nutrition committees and so forth recommend polyunsaturated fats. Well, it turns out that we have a mechanistic link suggesting that higher levels of these fatty acids might render your anti-inflammatory antioxidant enzymes to be less active, which could be problematic, particularly if you have high LDL cholesterol. So that's one thing to consider. Now, another study... Uh, published in 2009 in the Journal of Clinical Biochemical Nutrition Research. The title of this study was High Prevalence of Low Serum Peroxidase 1 in Subjects with Coronary Artery Disease. This study found a mechanism by which PON1 influences the risk of vascular disease is not yet known, but its activity is inactivated by oxidized LDL and preserved by antioxidants. And they did find in this particular study that PON1 activity and HL cholesterol are lower in subjects with angiographically documented coronary artery disease disease than in subjects with normal coronary and healthy controls. Further, serum levels of PON1 and HL cholesterol show inverse associations with the presence of coronary artery disease, but not to the severity of coronary disease in terms of number of diseased vessels. So if we look here at HL cholesterol and PON1 activity, the higher your HL cholesterol levels, the more active PON1 is. So if you look at your HDL and it's on the lower side, you know, mine tends to run in the 80s. I don't know about you. But what this also showed is a negative association of PON1 activity with lipid peroxides. You might be saying, what are lipid peroxides? Uh, these would be pro-inflammatory mediators derived from lipid compounds, such as oxidized LDL, such as linoleic acid, potentially that's highly oxidizable, especially if it's coming from fried food. And so that's what we see here is a negative association with lipid peroxides and PON1 levels. The higher the concentration of, say, fatty foods that you eat or foods that are cooked in reheated fryers and so forth, the activity of this uh, enzyme that's important goes down because it's working harder. It's trying to reverse this oxidative stress. And that is linked with coronary artery disease. So in conclusion, we have this really critically important antioxidant enzyme known as peroxidase 1. Peroxidase 1 is lowered in diabetic subjects. It is found to be associated with HDL cholesterol. The higher your HDL cholesterol, the more active this enzyme is. The more lipid-derived oxidative stress from fried foods and oxidized seed oils, that will put more strain on this antioxidant enzyme that increases the probability or susceptibility that LDL becomes oxidized. Oxidized LDL triggers or initiates the process of atherosclerosis that leads to coronary artery disease and cerebrovascular diseases. Translation, higher risk of heart attack or stroke. And we now know that higher blood levels of linoleic acid are linked with lower levels of PON1. There's one more finding here. Uh, higher blood levels of DHA that's derived from either fish or fish oil, uh, uh, cod liver oil as well, is linked with higher activity of PON1. PON1's protective. So, particularly in subjects who, or individuals like you, if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, if you have high LDL cholesterol, 
You probably shouldn't consume a lot of corn, soy, canola, sunflower, and cottonseed oil uh, because it's high in linoleic acid. You also should support metabolic health. And by supporting metabolic health, you're reducing oxidative stress in your vessels, which are really important. So those are my takeaways. Again, these are older studies. I haven't seen a lot of recent studies. I think there's a lot of you know, societal pressure uh, within the academic community to position seed oils, uh, canola in particular, sunflower, coin, corn, soy, and cotton seed oil in particular as health promoting. Because there is a, uh, in the zeitgeist, you know, a lot of people talk about how uh, these oils are uh, health promoting and that saturated fat is still the demon, right? But if we actually look historically, and we've talked about this data before, we are consuming much less saturated fat from animal products. Butter consumption is down. Tallow consumption is down. Lard consumption is significantly down. Red meat consumption as a whole is down. But what's up? We're eating a lot more. And I don't mean what's up like, hey, I mean, what is increasing? The trend is we're eating much more canola oil, much more vegetable derived oils, and we are seeing obesity rates are at record proportions, even in children. We're seeing diseases in children that normally only affect adults. We're seeing young people having sudden cardiac death on sports fields. I mean, this is real stuff. There's videos out there. So friends, just don't buy foods that contain linoleic acid. You need some. You're going to get it in your diet. Uh, steric acid and linoleic acid are found in a lot of foods, but you don't want to be putting, you know, a safflower or a sunflower oil on your salad dressings and then eating French fries that are fried in this stuff. And then, you know, having cookies and croutons and crackers and cereals. I mean, this it's everywhere. And so we want to be a little bit more mindful of this. So I would love to know what you think in the comment section below. I appreciate you tuning all the way to the very end. Thanks for your likes, your comments, your shares. We'll catch you on a future video down the road.